Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios, featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Over the past seven years, the Advancement Foundation, based in Vinton, and its gauntlet business program and competition has helped launch hundreds of small businesses, leaving other participants with revised business plans and more work to do. Annette Patterson is founder and president of the Advancement Foundation. Iris Park is director of community outreach and business education. And thank you both for joining us today. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you. I saw you snickering when I said you leave some people with work to do because that is true, right? Not it everybody is, makes it to the business club or, or they realize true. somewhere in the process of the mentoring program that I got more work to do. 100%, 100%, but so much better to do it in a classroom rather than, or should I say it virtually, rather than do it when you've opened your door, so. Yeah, you know, before we get into the details, it, because I'm thinking about it, it's, you know, it's amazing when I've talked to gauntlet participants who've gone through, basically it's, it's like a shark tank almost after they go through a couple months of mentoring. Sure. Um, yes. How much they say, wow, I really had to change or, or, or you know, they, I, I didn't realize this or whatever. And I guess when you're working on your own small business, you get in, you get in a silo and you think you know you everything. You love it, right? You love yeah. it, yeah. yeah. And I mean, what's the word now? Pivot, right? We got, everybody has to pivot, pivot. Um, but that's what entrepreneurs have to do all the time to stay relevant and to continue to grow their businesses. And so we give them an opportunity to do that with each other, with community leaders. And it, it just, it's amazing what comes out of it. Always better, always better. And you say you work, you've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs in, in the past. And yes. Is it tough for them sometimes to come off of what they think is the best plans and sliced really, bread? Really, it, it, it is. And it, it, this gives them an opportunity to really think outside of the box mm -hmm. and explore different ideas with other entrepreneurs um, and just open up that door um, and new conversations um, and collaborating with um, new leaders out in the community. Mm -hmm. And that over a million, I read online, over a million dollars in cash and in-kind services awarded over the past seven gauntlet competitions, over yep. 500 alumni, yep. uh, numerous volunteer mentors helping revise plans and judge the gauntlet competition phase. Yep. Did you envision all of this when the Advancement Foundation first got started in 2007? No. Um, you know, it's so interesting. And again, even in the Advancement Foundation, we're pivoting and learning as we go. And each year we add and adapt different um, programs to the gauntlet and to other things that we're doing. So, yeah, absolutely not. You know, definitely wanted to apply some of the things that I learned in higher education because I worked in advancement for higher ed. Um, to community development, right? So that was the plan is, you know, get out in the community, make things happen. Um, but, you know, you learn so much as you start doing that and you're, you're engaging with other resource agencies, you're engaging with community leaders, you know, there's politics. And, and so you're dancing around how do you make these things happen. And everybody's in the trenches trying to do their own work. So you got to find common goals. Um, and that takes time, it takes trust. You have to build that relationship over the years. So yeah, no, um, this is the eighth year of the gauntlet. We started with 15 entrepreneurs. Um, the highest class we had was the year of COVID, which 170 entrepreneurs. Wow. Last year we had 150. Um, the year uh, when COVID came out in March, we were halfway through the program. So we were meeting in different locations, six different locations across the region. And I think most of us had only been on one or two Zoom calls ever, ever in our career. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, so, so, I mean, literally it was Friday the 13th. We made the decision we're going to have to go virtual. And then we thought it was going to be a couple weeks, like really. Right. And um, we pulled it off. I mean, the, everybody got on board. Um, we had a couple places where, you know, broadband was an issue and they ended up going um, to another location to go to class, but it, to watch the class. But it was really fabulous because it opened up so many doors that we hadn't even thought of. Again, a pivot and you realize all of a sudden that we can connect an entrepreneur in Rockbridge County to someone in Floyd and we can connect mentors from all, o from all over the country right. to people. And so instead of just being in those, you know, those individual group classrooms, we were no longer limited. Mm -hmm. 
So how was it this year? Was it uh, this spring? Was it still hybrid or was it some in person, some on Zoom? Or it what? was a hundred percent virtual. It was okay. in class, um, but then in May, when which is when the competition uh, award ceremony is, we were able to to meet in person. And one of the things that was so cool about that is the entrepreneurs had been in a lot of small groups. Um, virtually, so we, you know, we had our regular general classes in the curriculum. We did some things differently. We taped some things that we had them watch in advance. So we used the the virtual classroom as an opportunity for them to really work in small groups. So they got to know each other in ways that even when we were in person, they weren't because they spent so much more time together in small groups. Right. So when we walk into the Vinton War Memorial, it was amazing. For the finale. It for the finale. Right. You know, people are walking up to you. You know exactly who they are. They're, they're, oh, they're hugging each other and all excited. Um, so that was really, that was really fun. That was really fun. Yeah, I was there for that night. It was like a big mixer. I saw a lot of people. Yes. Hey, I know you. We've been yes. on five yeah. Zoom calls together. Yes, something like that. Yeah. Uh, Iris, talk about your your position, director of community outreach and business education. Outreach to who and and, and what are your goals? Um, so our goal is to uh, cultivate uh, business. Uh, business leaders, uh, different entrepreneurs. Um, we are, I'm reaching out to um, anyone who would like to be a mentor mm -hmm. uh, to these entrepreneurs, um, any, anyone who would like to teach classes as well. Um, just anyone who wants to get involved uh, and has that uh, entrepreneur uh, mindset uh, that wants to uh, advance these individuals um, to, you know, to scale their business, mm -hmm. um, to start their business, you know, even if they have just an idea or don't even have a name yet for their business, um, to just get them going in the right direction. Um, so I'm reaching out to um, business leaders, community leaders, mm -hmm. um, anyone who wants to um, make donations as well, um, and that's even with in-kind prizes or donate their services and their times. You know, if someone has um, the ability to market or, uh, you know, create a logo, mm -hmm. um, they can don donate their services to uh, these entrepreneurs. Um, and so my, you know, my position is to uh, reach out to those community leaders. It seemed to me at the, like the finale that, uh, you know, there's some cash involved, but that the, it seems like, and that one of the main things mm -hmm. people really need is help with social media, website yeah. development, marketing, because that they don't have the budget for that yeah. or the expertise. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, it is, I think everybody gets excited about a business program and competition. You know, that's what really draws people in. We do give away three, over $300,000. <clears> There's also another, say, $400,000 that they could have access to through, low, through grants or low-interest loans and things like that. But I, one of the most special parts about Gauntlet is that it really is a community program and so while everybody's focusing on the awards what we're doing is really building community so we're getting experts to come in and share their knowledge which can shorten the learning curve I mean I you know if you think back when you started if you had somebody that sat down with you and gave you all the tips of things that they mistakes they made or what direction they thought or, sh or demonstrated for you how they made themselves think differently Iris talked about entrepreneurial mindset I mean that is a completely different mindset than general society or going to working for a company and I think a lot of companies now even are recognizing if they had entrepreneurial employees who thought entrepreneurial about whatever their role was in that organization, what a difference it would make. So the, the gauntlet, bringing together all of those resources, at the end of the day, the entrepreneurs would say, it doesn't matter to me what I win. I have this incredible network that is the foundation for me moving forward, and they continue to stay in touch. We have 650 Gauntlet alumni now after this last wow. class, um, and 250 mentors. And some of our mentors might have, you know, oh, I can give you a few hours. Some might say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow somebody through the whole program. Whatever you can bring to the table, kind of like Stone Soup. Remember the fable, Stone mm -hmm, Soup, mm -hmm. where everybody brought what they had from the community. Right. Uh, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, um, yeah I want to ask you, do you uh, talk about the, how the scope of the gauntlet has started, uh, has grown over the years. When you first started, I think it was Vinton in Roanoke County. Yep. But talk about how it's, it's, it's grown. Absolutely. So I mentioned we had 15 entrepreneurs um, that first year, and it was really a beta test. We were just trying to see, you know, how would this work? Um, would people get excited about it? And, you know, that led to the next year and the next year, and we were able to get some grant money and, and different things. And the program started in Vinton. Um, 
we had uh, 15 entrepreneurs. The next year, I think it was 35. We expanded a little bit into Botetourt County. And so each year we've added, you know, new communities. Um, so at this point right now, we're in Vinton, Roanoke, Roanoke City, Floyd, um, Botetourt, Bedford, um, Allegheny Highlands and Rockbridge counties. Um, we may be expanding down into Martinsville this year, which is very exciting, yeah. Pennsylvania County um, and Danville. Uh, it, it's just amazing. And, and you know, so many rural communities in particular, you know, just having a plan to move forward, a pathway, we partner with all of the different resource agencies. So depending on what a community has, um, you know, whether it's the SBDC or the chambers, um, in, in some communities, the libraries get very active in business education. And so, you know, we look at each individual community, what they bring to the table, what they can leverage um, to help the program grow. So in, the, so in these more outlying communities, Will it be in person or online? Will it be in person in the commu community itself? So we're um, mm -hmm. we're we're having a essentially a virtual platform mm -hmm. um, that we will have meet and greets in person in different localities as well to really incorporate um, those regions as right. well. But get, but then a uh, an in person meet and greet to get everybody kind of connected. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I guess if there's one good thing that came out of COVID is the fact that hey. Let's use the internet. This is a, this is actually a good idea to use the internet yeah. for. Yes, for absolutely, business. absolutely. Um, uh, talk talk about some other facets. Talk about the innovation mill, and its relationship to the Advancement Foundation. And you explained it to me in the past that these are like highly scalable businesses that are single. So are these businesses? Are they going through the gauntlet or they're pulled out before the gauntlet and put in the innovation mill next door? So um, it's interesting. Our approach to engineer opportunities for communities is programming and then bringing resources together. So if we can bring those two things together, we know we can make, we can move the needle and make things happen. So after several years of the gauntlet, and we have very diverse businesses. I mean, we have people who just have an idea, as Ira said, people who have been in business for 10 years. Uh, you know, just to, and we don't limit the gauntlet. Anybody with any kind of business, any kind of experience, or no experience. So you don't have to be a brand new. No. Okay. No. Yeah. Don't have to be a brand. Don't have to have any business experience. Um, we welcome everybody. So it's really that wide end of the funnel where we're trying to just bring entrepreneurs together, bring that mindset and that energy together. Um, the Innovation Mill was a Go Virginia project in Region Two, uh, which uh, started three years ago. And that was really to fill a gap that we had in our, in our region to help those early stage, high growth potential companies, companies that could have sales outside of the region, outside of the state. And there just really wasn't a place for them because investors and programming really wasn't focused on people who were just tinkering in their garage and playing around with maybe, maybe I have something. Um, and it was a phenomenal program. We well exceeded all of the goals. And you know, it's interesting, again, being open to learn and to advance programming as you see a need. We took that programming, we continued the innovation mill. So we have probably about 70 companies who have come through the innovation mill, and those are the higher growth companies. Um, that also led us to some thinking about as we look out over our region, and by region, I'm talking about the Shenandoah Valley, the Roanoke Valley, the New River Valley. Um, we can see that we have some industries that are pretty important for our region and for our state. Um, agriculture uh, is one that is critically important, and then outdoor recreation and tourism. So we have launched sort of a, a second tier uh, that will go along right along with Gauntlet and then lead into the Innovation Mill. Um, we have purchased a facility in Buena Vista. You talk about that. So uh, we have been working in Rockbridge for about two years, uh, lots of opportunity. The leadership there is super eager to make something happen. Buena Vista is a beautiful little town um, that's been just decimated really with industry leaving and um, jobs and, and that sort of thing, but a beautiful little town. Uh, there was a 37,000 square foot uh, industrial building right on the Mari River um, that's between the Mari River and the downtown Buena Vista area. And so with the help of VHDA and some other funders, uh, we have purchased the facility. So we will be building out value-added um, food, agricultural food um, product development, uh, small-scale manufacturing. That's another challenge for folks who want to scale their businesses is having a space to ramp up their manufacturing, um, packaging, distribution. 
the facility is right there off of 81 and 64, so in an hour we can get to all markets pretty much. And um, was there some connection to the what is there a connection to the Advancement Foundation or the Gauntlet necessarily? Through the for the Ag Center, absolutely. So, are, so are you looking for Ag entrepreneurs to come through the Gauntlet? Yes, yes, absolutely, yes, right. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so the center will be really Ag innovation and community development and um, building out that ag innovation um, portion of the program will be amazing because we've already got so many valuable individuals that are interested in this program and using it as a model that can be duplicated across the state. So Betty Brand, who was recently named to the Cannabis Authority Board, is um, on our board. John Renoni, Karen Jackson, who, John Renoni's president of Dabney Lancaster. Um, Karen Jackson, who was former deputy of technology, um, is on the board. Lynn Haith from the Bank of Botetot. So we've got some amazing folks who are committed to agriculture, that industry, and developing that industry that are going to be a part of the project. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be involved with the outreach on that, trying to find <laughs> yeah. uh, Yes, I guess I will. Yes. Um, so, I, you know, I will be re reaching out to community, community leaders there in Buena Vista and um, anyone who's uh, interested in being a mentor mm -hmm. um, or who would like to uh, run some classes there and workshops as well. Um, really um, a business incubator there as well to really um, develop the community there in Buena Vista. And really it seems like what you're doing by being set up in all these different outposts now is you're really developing mini business incubators. Yes. Because yes. if someone comes through the gauntlet in Buena Vista or Danville, th they pass the ward on, then maybe next year you've got another exactly. little cluster there. Absolutely. And you've got maybe more mentors that want to come out exactly. from the area. Yeah, yeah. It, it really, it, it does foster that growth for sure. Now you've gotten some state money towards the program. Is that, is that an ongoing thing at this point? Is, 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 is the Commonwealth recognize the value of what you're doing? Absolutely. Um, so DHCD has been a, a longtime funder of us. In fact, I was telling a group yesterday, um, our first gauntlet program started with a community business launch grant. And it was, I think it was $60,000 that year. And that gave us opportunity to build the program, to raise money for awards. And we just never stopped. You know, w once they awarded that, then we grew, continued to grow the program. We just raised money on our own. Um, we've since then led, I think, four different CBL grants for different communities, Buchanan, um, up in Allegheny. We did one last year for Buena Vista. Um, so it, it does, it gives you kind of that foot in the door to, to bring some resources to the table for some of these communities and then just continue to grow it. So even after the grant goes away, we continue to keep it sustainable. Talk about, uh, Annette and Iris, about, do you, you track the, the people that go through this, the participants? How many of them have become real success stories, grown, put up a storefront, hired people, that type of thing? It, you know, it is, it is unbelievable to me, just with the initial support that they receive from the gauntlet, the continuous support they receive from getting to know the communities where they're opening. Um, I don't know if you remember last year we had a panel of three entrepreneurs who had come through the program and just had them tell their story. Um, Twin Creeks is a great example. Mm -hmm. um, Twin Creeks, three guys had full-time jobs, a banker, engineers, and they were brewing beer in their garage. And they started, they started seeing some of the home brew competitions and they started entering those competitions mm -hmm. and they were winning. And they saw the uh, advertisement for the gauntlet and they talked to each other. They were like, well, let's, you know, let's maybe go through this program because they said, you know, we, we're professionals, but we don't know anything about running a business. So they came through the gauntlet that year. I think that was 2017 or 18. They've been through twice. They've been through twice um, for expansion. Uh, but they won that year. Uh, we were able to help them buy some of their initial equipment. We were able to work with the community, uh, with their landlord to, to get them into a space um, while they were getting their brewer's license. And they literally, they finished their business plan, their three-year projected business plan in 11 months. I mean, it was just amazing. And it completely transformed Vinton. Just that one business. I mean, all the businesses had an impact, but that one business, you know, who knew beer was such a popular thing? But I mean, people were coming down. Uh, there were, you know, you couldn't find a place to park. There were so many people right. there. And then a few years later, um, they expanded into Explorer Park, which was a completely underutilized asset for our community. The old brew tavern. The right. old brew tavern. And so, and, and actually we have two businesses down there. Um, uh, Blue Mountain Adventures is down there and, and they're down there. So, it, you know, it's just, it's amazing that, you know, a little bit of support 
uh, um, a, a lot of people pitching in what they can share to help businesses move forward. And that story is repeated over and over and over again. We had a gentleman in Covington, Virginia, an associate pastor, tinkering in his garage. When I talked to him, it's an amazing story. He, yeah. it, it is incredible. And that's a tech, that's a tech, a lot of the companies that come through the, uh, not technically oriented, but that company, Ivo or something. Yeah, Ivo, technical. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I mean, he was tinkering in his garage, no formal training, and he has literally created truly wireless power. So not like put your phone on this pad, right. but like your phone will charge. Um, and it could run cars that way too. Yeah, oh, yes. right. I, I mean, it's just phenomenal. And again, you know, this is talent that we have that, you know, we're uncovering as we continue to try to, you know, shake the bushes and find the, the brilliant people out there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to speak about one of your alumni, uh, uh, Cowden Technologies, Mickey Cowden, yes. who was actually, a, I think, a mentor this past year in yep. drone development. Um, after they got done with uh, the gauntlet, they, they got a $75,000 grant. Now they're in the ramp program yep. downtown. Um, maybe the next step in the development, but uh, are you happy to see that? Or, or, or yes. would you like to develop more of a relationship with that next step up, maybe incubator, like a ramp? Well, you know, it takes all of us. And that's one of the things that I think is so amazing about our region is, you know, we all find our path and then we are trying to onboard people to their next step. So the innovation mill, so, so Mickey came through the gauntlet. So we kind of discovered him there. Then we sent him through the innovation mill, which was focused on early stage companies and helped him get a little further. He got that $75,000 grant and then he's ready for ramp. So, you know, if, if we didn't have these different levels mm -hmm. of support services, people would fall off and that's exactly how it's supposed to work. So we are thrilled that he's at ramp and thrilled that m more companies are gonna be continued to run that way. Mm -hmm. I think his past year, Mickey and his sister, they own a farm or something, they went through the uh, yep. Go on it again, so yeah. like, uh, like he's not busy enough. No. That, so. <laughs> well, it is funny because, you know, people are serial entrepreneurs too. And they, I mean, we've had that happen quite a bit where somebody will get a business come, going through the gauntlet and then they'll come back through either to expand or to ha start another business or help somebody in their family start a business. Um, and that camaraderie is just amazing. I mean, people are sharing the, the information. They want to continue to stay involved. Like Mickey, they come back and they become mentors afterwards or they'll donate services. Um, it's, you know, it's the way it should be. Talk about um, the, the gauntlet participants that do not make it to the competition phase. Sure. Uh, do some of them come back the next year, yep. may assess where they're at and maybe come back next year and give it another, another go? Absolutely. So it's a, you know, it's a rigorous program. Um, it's 10 weeks, so it's pretty intensive. Uh, they have to develop a business plan during that period of time. So they're going to classes, they're working in small groups, they're, they have a mentor or two, some of them, and they're doing customer discovery. They're evaluating all the potential barriers and then they're either pivoting or not pivoting, but they're learning what it's going to take. And, you know, is it worth it? What's the ROI? Are you going to make enough money to sustain yourself? And you know, I mean, businesses don't necessarily make money right out of the gate. And so you have to be prepared for that. And what are you willing to sacrifice to do that? And we believe in lean startups. So we don't want people to, um, you know, put a mortgage on their house and, and all of those sorts of things, but we want to set them up um, for later investments, for bank loans, and, and those sorts of things. But a lot of times they will realize through this process that, uh, okay, this is going to be way more work than I wanted, or the money isn't there. I didn't, you know, after talking to all these potential customers, I've realized, you know, I've got to charge less or I've got to charge more and they're not going to want it. So it is, it is definitely a process um, that can sometimes lead them to say, I don't think I'm ready to do this right mm -hmm. now. And I could save them from spending a lot more money if they're not ready to... Really. Absolutely. Right. I mean, that's right. the goal. What is the biggest thing you've learned from working with entrepreneurs? What's the biggest stumbling block in their head or whatever? I, I, um, I don't know if it's a, a stumbling block. Um, I have a, my, my family owns a business. And so I've actually I've, I had that experience going through <laughs> that experience uh, starting in a basement um, <laughs> with my in-laws and going through, you know, that process of um, to, to you know, to owning a business, owning a storefront. So I, I, I have, that's where my passion is. I see that, and um, just you know, starting with the organization, I see what all the good things that they have, you know, that we have done, and uh, these entrepreneurs are using all their tools. So mm -hmm. even if they don't go through, you know, through the 
through the program decide to compete at the end. They've taken everything that they've learned and all the resources and um, you know put that back into their business to grow their business. And I just I, th I think it's wonderful to see uh, the, uh, these entrepreneurs uh, go through the process. And I've heard a lot of people, I've talked to people from the, that have been through the competition, some friends of mine, been through the gauntlet, and the networking, yeah. as much as anything, yeah. you, you come across someone else that they've got a great idea or they're doing something a little bit different, but it would help your business. So that's part of what it's all about, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, COVID has, has opened up a world to us that we really weren't in touch with prior to that virtual world where we can connect somebody who wants to open a bakery in Buena Vista with somebody who wants to open a bakery in downtown Roanoke and mentors, the same thing with mentors, we can connect them and they're not in competition, right? So they're, they can share ideas and they say, well, I'm trying this or I've added this to my menu or um, just, you know, just so many opportunities for them to be able to expand their thinking. Got less than a minute left, but are you taking applications now for 2022 and should yes. people start lining, getting their ducks in a row? Yes, yeah, so, um, we're opening application early this year, November 2nd. Yeah. Um, we have our first virtual information um, info session um, October 19th, and then the, the uh, the classes start on February 1st. And here we go again, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, it's been amazing. State Farm has been our lead sponsor for the last five years, and they are working with us to incorporate their agents into our programming. We already have 50 individuals on the list who are ready to ready to go. So right. we're, we're, we're hoping for 150 this year. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Annette Patterson and Iris Park with the Advancement Foundation and the Gauntlet Program, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'm Gene Morano. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.